What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. I'm Brendan Dunn, news editor at Soul Collector. I'm Matt Welty, editor of Complex Sneakers. Before we get into the show, we do want to speak about a tragic event that occurred earlier today. Sneaker journalism, sneaker media lost a legend, a uh, bright star, and one of the most talented, creative, and knowledgeable men ever to work within the business, and that is Gary Warnett. First and foremost, rest in peace to Gary, and thank you for everything that you did for the culture, for the media space, and for sneakers as a whole. And my personal uh, exposure to him was via Crooked Tongues, which probably a lot of people don't know about nowadays in 2017, but it was easily one of the most important early sites and forums to sneaker media. Gary was a great, great friend to, to all of us. Um, everyone who came across him, you know, it was an infinite stream of just sneaker yeah. knowledge. and The most knowledgeable guy. The most knowledgeable, you know, culturally, sneaker-wise, all that. Did Crooked Tongues, you know, had his own sneaker collabs. Yep. Did Crooked Tongue sneaker collabs. Did a lot of behind-the-stuff scenes at, you know, Supreme and Nike and wrote probably a lot of stuff on Nike's website that you didn't that know you that didn't he know wrote. About. Right, exactly. That you, he's a guy that would hit you up and he goes, hey man, I read your article. He's like, I, I, really, I really liked it, you know? Yeah. And he's like, he... The thing is that Gary had such strong opinions about sneakers and he wasn't quick to, you know, he's quick to call out bullshit and say what he loved. And it's like, I really think that, you know, it's it's hard to be on here right now. I'm just keep it honest, but mm -hmm. we wouldn't, I don't know if we would be doing this right sure. now if it's like someone didn't have opinions like, like Gary did sure. where he's able to like, you know, rant rave about what, what he liked and what, what he didn't like. So it's... I think you know it's it's always tough to gather words to kind of explain how we're feeling in times like these. Um, I think we all have read his 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 own personal blog so many times and and, and been amazed at this type of stuff he's unearthing or just this yep. encyclopedic knowledge he has of, of footwear. Yep. And that's not to sell him short as a friend and you know a, a great person in general to so many people. I mean, one of the one of the I think best things about just kind of knowing him in the relatively limited way that I did was. You know, I really, I really looked up to his his writing and kind of, you know, put the, him on this pedestal. Despite that, despite him feeling like such a tall figure in our scene, he was still so accessible. I would email him, and he would, you know, a, a random question about a, a random sneaker or piece of, of trivia, and he would always have the answer, or he would always have an opinion. Like you said, like the highest praise to have him say that he read something you wrote. You know, that yeah. that always meant a lot to me. So. Uh, Rest in peace, Gary Warnett. Yeah, rest yeah. in peace, Gary rest Warnett. Peace, Gary. Uh, obviously, the show must go on, as we just said. Brendan, kick us uh, off. First thing we want to talk about is the rumored return of the Concord Air Jordan 11. It came out this week that the sneaker is supposed to come back for holiday of 2018. Obviously, we're at the point where we expect a holiday Air Jordan 11 release every year. So that, that part is not surprising. The fact that the Concord's coming back, if that turns out to be the case, is, again, not super surprising because Yes, we discussed this. The shoe last released in 2011, but it feels like that, it feels though. very recent. Yeah. But they also did the lows. They also did the lows yeah. in between. That's so correct. It's <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, and that's about the right time gap uh, where we're at now for right. for Jordan to to bring back a shoe. Uh, it's supposed to be remastered, as is the case with the Air Jordan 11s now. So we get this a lot here on the show, and you hear it a lot. It's like. Jordan can't continually rely on bringing back its old stuff. This is a no-brainer, though. I mean, this yeah. is going to sell out. Yeah. But to me, it's like, I was happier that Jordan was going to bring out either the old red or the white and navy joint, which was which is a Over new this? colorway. Over this? Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you, I'm, I'm personally tired. Of, I'm full I, in I the boat of being tired of it. Do you know what? <laughs> do you know, the thing about it that sounds so fucking crazy is that, you know, you had... Um, when the Space Jams dropped in 09. That's the moment where sneaker culture went from like this niche, even kind of yeah, like Nike SB corner, thing to like everyone wanted it, yeah. you know? And yeah. then they had hit after hit, Cool Grays, Concords, all that. Yeah. It was just like pandemonium every Christmas expected. And it's like, yeah, this, to me it's like, it's crazy. Cause like, I know the 11 is such a popular, you know, silhouette yeah. or whatever. Wait, 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 we will not accept any Jordan 11 slander. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not hating on the shoe at all. Okay. I'm just saying that like, it's kind of funny because if you actually look at current trends in everything, this shoe kind of like, it's an outlier to what's going on sure, right now. But it always knocks. It always knocks, yeah. but that's why I'm saying why maybe you haven't seen as many people wearing it because it's funny because everyone feels the need to buy the 11. 
mm. but not but necessarily rocket. Not, not necessarily rocket okay. because it's like just what's with what's in right now. It I might not you. necessarily be the, the right. number one choice. Again, with, with Jordan, such a double-edged sword in that we 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 put their feet to the fire when they rely on OG colorways like this, but then when they try to do something different, we also hate on it. So I don't know what the answer it's a, it's is a, here. It's a tough balance for them. It to is, strike. but I don't I don't think this is the answer. It's an easy answer, it's an alley-oop, it's gonna sell out. I hope it's a little different, like the Space Jams were with the 45 on it, then, and the and the patent cut, than the one that dropped in 2011. All right, speaking of something different, yes. we, we yeah. did see something very different yes. in terms of signature shoes last week. Rich, tell us what I'm, happened, I, I guess what's I'm the latest? I guess I'm upset that for some reason, we escaped maybe two full-size runs without mentioning how Lonzo Ball. I that? don't even know how that, that's my fault. That's my fault. So, let's talk about Lonzo Ball. <laughs> this shoe, I, this, I can't believe they, they, they keep doing, like they keep managing to have like another turn or another insane thing happen with these shoes. So Lonzo Ball, LeVar Ball, Big Ball of Brand, hold up, officially scrapped the original design of the Zo2 to unveil what they're calling now the Zo2 Remix, which actually looks nothing like the OG joint. Um, <laughs> totally different but, shoe. But in my opinion, is a much better sneaker. It's right. better, but we're, we weren't building from a big base here. But the, but this the first one was sneaker. terrible. Yeah, I agree with that. But if you took the Big Baller brand story out of this and the shoe wasn't Lonzo, Lonzo Ball sneaker and right. it was just like a generic sneaker or a Nike or Adidas sneaker, would you wear it? I hate that argument, right? because you can't strip any sneaker of its heritage or of its endorsement and say, would you wear it? Would I rock Jordans if Michael Jordan didn't I'm not, simultaneously I'm not, ruin my childhood not, and make my childhood I'm great? Say, you I'm, know saying, what I mean? like, I'm, I'm just saying aesthetically, you know, there's certain shoes that you like aesthetically more, with that, even if they had blank logos look, on Rich it. Rich wants a pair regardless. Hell yeah. Two important things here, first of all, are that the sneaker is completely different, which is wild. And two, it's still the same price, which is wild too. Still $495. And they're still supposed to drop ship in November. He rocked them at Los Angeles Lakers Media Day where, listen, I'm excited finally to see this sneaker on the NBA court and that will be the culmination of this damn project. I think th the interesting thing to talk about here is obviously that this shoe is made in collaboration with a group they're calling Santa Ana Designs. Right. Conclusion. Let's jump to fucking conclusions oh, right okay. now. Oh, okay. Let's be Should real. We not? Because wait, wait, wait. Let's has be sent real. Us some le some letters. Yeah. A, a sketch. Hold up, yeah. Don't get sued. But let's be real Fuck and sketchers. jump to conclusions. In no, in Matt Welty's personal opinion. And not a matter of fact, but in Matt Welty's personal opinion, yes, fuck Matt Skechers. Welty is going to jump to a conclusion, and we Skechers are not. should be out of business right now. Whoa, in, whoa, in Matt whoa, Welty's whoa, personal whoa, opinion, whoa, whoa. oh, because they in, lost the lawsuit to Adidas for fucking stealing all their shoe designs. Okay. Anyway, shout out to Skechers. Can we fuck Skechers? Can, Just hypothetically, yes. if Big Baller Brand ended up being a fake story, fake news about this being an independently owned business, and okay. in in you know, Lonzo designed the shoe from scratch and yes. LeVar putting in all this like sweat to like make, get this thing off the ground. Mm -hmm. If. If in the whole fucking feel good story about supporting independently owned business falls out from underneath it. Yes. And they know they're charging $500 for a pair of Skechers sneakers. Yes. Do you still fuck with Big Baller brand? I say it really depends on how this relationship occurred. If, if, this is, if, if this happens to be true, yes. how can anyone justify a $500 price point you can't. for a sneaker you company can't. that clearly is made to undercut all the brands who charge normal retail prices? In your opinion. If everything that you just jumped out the window and said is correct, there is no way that you can justify a $500 Skechers sneaker. There's no way. If, it is not, if everything you just said is not correct, then it still holds true that uh, LeVar Ball did this on his own. Shout out Lonzo Ball. I hope he drops 60 damn points on day one in his Zo2 remixes. Also send me a pair. Okay, elsewhere in signature sneakers, uh, Giannis, a guy, a guy who- Giannis. Is Giannis? <laughs> Can you pronounce his last name for me? Atentacumpo. I don't want okay. you to do the Ablo thing again. Incredible. <laughs> um, freak freak. So basically, uh, he is a free agent right now. Um, young star in the NBA, yeah. Milwaukee Bucks, has a lot of physical upsides, you know, a lot of people yeah. lauding his athletic ability. 
Um, so, you know, him being a free agent, obviously the brands are going to pitch him. Yeah. In the way that Adidas decided to pitch him is they sent a truck to his house yeah. full, of, full of Yeezys. Yeah. You know, he hasn't made anything clear as to if, where he's going to sign. Yeah, Giannis deleted... Atentacumpo. <laughs> deleted, as far as I could tell, the, the Instagram stories where he showed off this stuff. So, you know, I think he was definitely having second thoughts about the idea of we, uh, putting that out there. If Adidas were to land the Greek freak, I think it would be a massive thing for them. He's young, he's talented, he's going places. I'm not saying it's going to bring performance basketball back, but remember, Adidas grew double digits, right? Brennan, was that what it was? During the time that basketball performance was going down. Like, Adidas right. basketball grew. So this, to me, is a good thing for them. He's good off court, he's yeah. good on court. I think they've also, and it's not, I know performance basketball is on the way down, but yep. I think one way that they, that Adidas has kind of found like an in-between on yes. that yep. is the, you know, the, James, the James Harden shoe. Yep. Uh, info from our, one of our technicians saying that it is pronounced Giannis. We'll have to, we'll have to go over that later. If, <laughs> if it is pronounced Giannis, Rich, Rich Lopez's sneaker card. No, 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 that's an NBA card. You're going to put my NBA card in the block. Okay. You can keep yeah. your sneaker card. But. <laughs> but I think just when you look at that, that Harden lifestyle shoe, when you looked at what Nike tried to do a few years ago when they were just like making like those like shitty like fake high fashion like right. LeBron. Which they're still doing. They did that with the LeBron Nike joint. KDA NSW lifestyle. Nike yeah. And they just were like, NSW they just looked like a pair like dunks or whatever. And it's like, it just was like, eh, it didn't really work. But Not like, good shoes. No, but like the, the Harden uh, lifestyle, you know, it just looked like a regular shoe that f actually fit in line with everything else the brand it was, was doing naturally yeah that shoe sucked anyway I, i've said before it was fine uh the thing is though adidas basketball has much bigger worries on their hands yes which which brings us to our next topic um as part of the massive ncaa uh <laughs> corruption bust that kind of happened this week you know 10 people arrested by the fbi coaches assistant coaches um one of those people was uh an adidas exec by the name of jim gatto um basically uh the fbi is or their they're alleging that he was involved in, I think he's being hit with a charges of wire fraud and money laundering, uh, federal charges. Uh, the legal filing does not mention Adidas by name okay. because Adidas is not being charged. But gotcha. um, Jim Gatto is accused of in using money for the company that he works for, which you could, right. yeah, you could draw some conclusions, right. um, to sway players okay. at, at top universities. Gotcha that are sponsored by that brand. To play there. To play there and to later sign endorsement deals with that brand. If Rick Pitino got fired because of this shit, it's like yeah. everyone thought Rick Pitino was like mafia, like untouchable yeah. dude. Like he's slipped out of a lot of really yeah. right. slippery, oh, yeah. slippery. He's starting at UMass. Uh, sources are saying that many people involved with that program are being subpoenaed. Uh, that makes and, sense. You know, document requests Listen, and things like that. The, the biggest takeaway for me personally about this is that this is only a surprise to the FBI. Youth basketball programs, college recruitment, or, or, or anything on that level. If you've ever watched Blue Chips. But, yeah, if, you ever, sure. if you ever watched He Got Game. Sure, this is common practice. <laughs> it's not legal practice, but this is common practice, man. These kids, unfortunately, because they don't get paid in college, are worth so much damn money to the programs and to the brands that you're going to do whatever it takes, legally or illegally, supposedly in this case, to get these kids on your squad and to get them to wear your stuff. This is not a surprise to anyone but the FBI. The surprise is that they got caught. The surprise, like Wealthy said, is that Patino got pinched. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just wondering who's next. Is I It could be I anyone. Mean, I, think, I think even if it's not a surprise, I think this does change a lot going forward. And I sure. think that, you know, I don't the know. way... I don't know. I, don't know. I, I have to assume that this type of money will stop flowing in this way, or for, at least maybe for slow a second. Down. Maybe for a second. You don't. You don't think. But nah, you, you don't think this that it's also. Terms. But, but I mean, with all the talk that's that's been going on lately too, do you don't think that the NCAA is somewhere near maybe turning a corner about maybe paying, paying their kids? Once Shout you, out to Jay Billis. Once you get caught for committing a crime, the only thing you learn is how to commit that crime better. So I'm going to say that this is not going to change. It's, people are just going to get better at hiding it. This is, it's just too much money at stake. Yeah. That takes us to the best and worst things that we've <laughs> seen on the internet this week. That was easily one of the worst things I've seen. But B, you saw something that you think is the best. Yeah, last week I was really happy about the Dame Dash yes. sneaker auctions. Yes. Uh, you know, basically Dame Dash, Rockefeller Records. A bunch of sneakers that he owned and, and previously bought in the in the height of his 
popping tags era <laughs> all ended up on eBay, and it was such a, a such a time capsule yeah. of, of a certain period in sneakers and what kind of shoes you would be buying if you had a ton of money there. I mean, Orca, Air Trainers, Trainers yeah. Air Force Ones, it's definitely like orange, that. orange and gray box Nikes. Oh, just a lot of a lot of beautiful stuff, and it was like a lot of fun, just like looking dead at those socks. auctions. And yeah. I actually did buy a pair. I'm not going to say Salute. which pair. But I'm I did end up my phone to see where my watch spending, was at, to be honest spending with you. some money on this auction. It was just a actually no, just a time capsule for us. This represents the golden age epitome of his Nike stuff of that era in sneakers. Mm -hmm. Man, the stuff he had was crazy, and they actually ended up going for pretty damn good prices, which. We're told every week that nobody cares about these sneakers, nobody cares about Nikes, nobody cares about OG vintage sneakers, but if nobody cares about them, why the hell are these auctions going for so much money? So much so that I can't afford anything on these auctions, which is really fucking upsetting. Wealthy, tell us about the worst thing you saw in sneakers this week. I know it's something you feel passionate about. Yeah, yeah this is, this is something right that, um, you know, uh, just wanted to preface where it's like, one of my favorite things in sneakers, or one of my personal favorites, is the Adidas Spezial collection that drops, you know, um, once a season. Uh, designed by Gary Aston, a friend of mine. Um, I think the stuff is great. It's all based off of kind of like vintage uh, Adidas archive uh, stuff from the from the 70s. As you can see, I don't know if you could see, but um, I don't know what happened. But Adidas <laughs> spelt the name of the the shoe wrong. Um, this is the typo on the box, right? On the box, typo on the box, and it's like. You know, it's like, I know... It's embarrassing. This is like one of my favorite lines, and I think, and I'm not saying it just to say, but I think Gary does a great job, you know, creating mm -hmm. these... Oh, he definitely does. Creating these collections for being non-boost boys, you know, like people just genuinely know the brand, and it's like such a premium, you know, part of, of the company, or at least what they're trying to present, and it's like, I know this sort of stuff's like out of his hands or the people who are into it creatively, and someone... And Adidas fucked up and spelled the name on the shoes wrong. And this is not, though, now that I'm remembering it, this is not exclusive to Adidas because Jordan. Right. Yeah. Some early retro stuff in the spelled, 2000s. Spelled it Jordna <laughs> on one of their box sacks. It was like a huge Nike talk conspiracy mm -hmm. at the time back in the early mid 2000s. So it happens, but I'm glad that I'm glad that you caught this. Rich. Yes. Tell us your worst thing you saw in sneakers this week. One I yes. very much agree with you on. So the worst thing that I saw on the internet last week was not so much the sneaker. So let me. I'll get to that. But everyone on Instagram and their mothers posting pictures of themselves and their mothers in the Balenciaga Triple S trainer. Okay. I can't believe this shoe was a thing. And that is the worst thing I saw. Now the sneaker itself. Right? Sucks 100%. Yes. Okay. Yes. The sneaker itself is, to me, is whatever. Right? Really? It's really? whatever. Well, it's you know he's kind of got a thing for Skechers now, so. Stop. When the Oswegos were kind of coming back into people's mindset. Yeah. The Raph Simmons people, Adidas Oswego. Yeah, the Raph Simmons Adidas Oswego. I got, you know, heat from people calling that sneaker a dad shoe. You know, no one rocks these chunky dad shoes. If no one rocks these chunky dad shoes, why is Everyone on my Instagram timeline rocking this shit. Weird, you can't man. tell me that this sneaker isn't the dad shoe on steroids. It has three soles. It has three soles. I guy. just don't even know like where we got to the point where we're spending money on like Balenciaga sneakers. Like this, this. Well, other... the arena, the arenas were good. <sighs> no, that shoe sucks. I you are wild. I don't care about that shoe. I don't care about that speed knit thing. That's like the fake. Like lunar epic type or sock or thing. Like, NMD, yeah. I can't believe people. But that shoe, that shoe, that shoe's hype. You see a ton. I know. Of, you see a ton of tourists just, like all in that shoe in New I York just don't know all how day. We got here, I man. understand that knit thing more than I understand that, this thing because to Wilty's point, every week the knit high top thing is in style. I'm not so mad at the triple S. I'm not so mad at it. I would if, if but, everyone in their moms was wasn't rocking it. Remember, I might, remember or if I had the money. Remember when uh, the Yeezy 700 Wave Runner first came out. Good a point. A, a lot of people were comparing it to this shoe and some people were wondering if that was a Balenciaga sneaker and yep. not a pair of Adidas. I just remember the people being really hype on the black and red one, but I want to yeah. talk to those people. And let's let's talk about the more egregious thing, not even just that the shoe looks whack, it's that it comes fucking pre-distressed and it's like the rubber's like <laughs> hanging off of it and it looks like it's all fucked up. There's, and, there's nothing good about listen, this shoe. Again, I'm not so mad at the sneaker itself. I'm more mad about people 
littering, infesting my IG timeline with Yo, this thing. Skechers needs to it. rip this off. Rip off their rip off. <laughs> oh, wait. Actually, someone posted a Zara rip. I think it was High Snobiety. Shout Zara out to High ripped, Snobiety. Yeah. A Zara ripped or off a, this a sneaker. that, in your opinion, looks like this sneaker. This is what they said. <laughs> this is what they said. But again... And people are like, how can they be mad when Balenciaga ripped off Skechers to begin with? But the, the thing about it is now, going back into time, you mentioned the Wave Runner. The Wave Runner and the Raph Simmons look, the Oswego, look a lot less... Suspect in the light Bro, now that this thing this dropped. This shoe looks like a fucking Minotaur's hoof. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It does. I'll give you that. All right. Let's let's move on to something more positive. We're going to talk about our cops of the week and yep. our drops of the week. Rich, I believe you have a cop of the week. I the do. sneaker you of of all the stuff releasing this week that yeah. you like the most. Please tell us about it. There's a lot of stuff dropping this week. Not much of it is that great, but that doesn't take anything away from this sneaker. Uh, my cop would be the Mastermind Adidas EQT in uh, the 9317 Boost See, this mid. doesn't look like a Rich Lopez shoe to me. Let me tell you why. Boost Please. boys. Please. <laughs> chill. Are you a convert to the Boost God? Is chill, chill, here? chill. Mastermind is one of those brands to me, early streetwear, like double taps, uh, black scale, uh, who, who, clot even. Neighborhood. Neighborhood. Neighborhood's mm -hmm. a great one. That I have a ton of respect for that they introduced me into streetwear. This yeah, sneaker is very mastermindish in that it's black and white, which Mastermind does all their stuff in black and white. Pretty easy job, right? Their their logo is on the medial side, so you can't see it here. To me, that's dope because the logo is a skull and bones, and that's been misappropriated and reappropriated in a million different ways nowadays. And I'm not a fan of this sneaker in its low form, the but blue the pair? mid. No, no, no. The EQT 9317. But isn't there? There's like there's like a there's royal a blue, pair black and yeah. blue, for right? Both. Yeah. But. I like the mid-cut of this sneaker. And obviously, as we've spoken about a bazillion times, Boost is super damn comfortable guy. That's All it. Right. All right. Uh, Welty, I think you and I actually share yes. our pick for the cop of the week. This is a good sneaker, too, um, though. More, more a Welty shoe than it is a Brendan shoe, but yeah. the Stussy X New Balance 990. I, I, I just like this. I mean, it's, it's simple, it's clean, and it's like one of the you know yep. first exciting New Balance collaborations to me in a long time. They haven't, yeah, I mean, New Balance really hasn't done like a ton of collaborations like they like they used to right. anyways. Mm -hmm. And it's like, anytime Stussy does a sneaker, people are Stussy's gonna- Stussy's another one for me. Yeah, you're, yeah. Gonna, you're gonna pay attention no matter what. Like, yeah. let's be real, it's like when this dropped, it's like regardless of people were like super crazy about this, people were paying attention just because they're like, oh shit, Stussy's doing a, a shoe. And if you look at it, just cream white, um, on trend with the dad shoe. Yeah, the 990 definitely having a moment right now. It's, yeah. a, it's su This is like the epitome. This isn't just like a fashion dad shoe. This is like a legitimate dad sneaker. This was designed for fathers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like We're not just calling it a dad a shoe. Yeah. Yeah. At the same time, I I like I like it because it's like it's su it's minimal and it's like it's just like they just did a colorway. I think it says Stussy on the aglets. And it, the footbed. A uh, footbed, and yep. I think it comes with a dust bag that says Stussy on it, yep. but. It's a good sneaker, man. I mean, there's nothing. Supposed, there's nothing wrong with it. Supposed to be this shoe is supposed to be wild limited. Okay. Allocations supposed to be very, very small on it. So, Wait, are you trying to yeah, cop? Are you, did you? I, I think so. Things? Yeah. All right. Um, let's talk about our drops of the week shoes that we will be staying yes. away from from all this stuff. This one to me is is really obvious, and that is the promo jacket Air Jordan Six, right? Oof. But every time I speak ill of Jordan Brand here, it, it hurts my heart because I'm at heart, as you said earlier, a Jordan. Wearing, dude, right? wearing Jordans right now. Wearing Jordans right now, right? We come down hard on Jordan for rehashing old stuff over and over again. And then when they do new stuff, we hate on it too. But this is just the wrong direction for me, in my opinion. This is a reach for me. No one really knows that this moment ever existed or even cares. It's supposed to be inspired by his jacket that he wore in SNL. And the sneaker's just not good. It's just not a good sneaker. Although, let's, let's, I think, I think a couple years ago, Soul Collector actually published Jordan moments that should inspire sneakers, and this, this was on it. So let's was just- Was it really? Uh, yes, was this on yes. It? I didn't even that, know that. that I don't know who's responsible for that, but we will definitely go back and uh, figure that but out. But if you take away the story from this shoe and just go, do you fuck with this? The answer is no. Well, the the, yeah, as you said, the sneaker has to stand on its own without the story, period. Yeah. The story just enhances it. Every single- Vintage photograph of Michael Jordan it's doing grass, something right? that is not basketball. <laughs> you said doing something. You know, I, I just will want at one point be mine. I want the, I want the I want the beer pong eleven lows to come out. I man. would not. I want yeah. I want them to do it. I want them to do a patent. solo cup. Don't give away these ideas for free, man. You got to pay Matt Welty for this type of advice. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. My my drop of the week is the ASAP Nas Converse One Star. I like 
I've said it before in the show, I like what they're doing right now with the with the one star. This just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, with all due respect to ASAP NAS, I don't think we need to go this deep into the ASAP collective as, as far as giving guys shoes. I don't know how deserving is ASAP Nast of a sneaker collaboration. You know, what is his natural connection to the Converse One Star beside whatever the press release tells you? I suspect not much. And this is not a good looking shoe. Is it safe to assume that you think this sneaker looks nasty? <laughs> Yo, you gotta see yourself out. Take someone cut off his mic. Get him out of here, please. Well done, Matt Welty. <laughs> Last drop, Welty. This shoe <laughs> fucking sucks. <laughs> What's your beef with it? Tell, tell I mean, us. I like I like I like blue suede <laughs> shoes sometimes. I don't like blue suede Air Jordan fives. It's just so fucking blue. To me, this is a layup to you because you don't rock J's. It's just a Jordan, so that's yeah, an easy but, thing for him. But, Did you rock these? No, no, I probably. <laughs> that's oh, too. Let the record close, show. Let the record that's show. Too, that's Although doing you got the, you too got the blue hat on, it might this, be. Yo, this though. might be your fit. <laughs> See, I'm wearing top threes now, which I've red and blue, right? But little detail that you might have missed here is that the red polo guy on my Ooh. undershirt. You see, these wow. are details here. There's levels, this is not slacking. You know what I'm trying to there's say? There's literally levels to Rich Mays Lopez's fit. But I do want to, we do have sneakers lined up here today that oh, I do want to Oh, some other stuff releasing this week, right? So this is dropping this week, obviously. Uh, Nike Air Maestro 2. Yep. Ronnie Fogg's joint, uh, Kith on the back, Kith on the tongue, it's got the zipper. Is this a good sneaker though? Um, for some people, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the biggest cop-out answer I think I've ever heard. So these are the Royal Finer Air Jordan 1s, which in my opinion I think are actually better than the Black Reds. Uh, do you don't agree? No, I don't, I don't care for either of them. This sneaker is dope. Are you crazy? The biggest criticism I've heard of it is like people don't like how the how the the logo looks with how the knitting looks on the around the collar. I don't care. I just don't need anything other than the the leather version of it, the OG version. Okay, okay, hold up, hold up. So this is what I'm trying to say, and we're we're going back and forth on the same Jordan thing, right? If Jordan Brand is going to do a modern day upgrade to a classic sneaker. This is a good way to do it. It keeps the overall look and feel. Can I finish, dude? Jesus Christ. It finish, It keeps the overall look. You're just a Jordan hater, so you, can't yeah, even, you shouldn't even be able to speak true. during this segment. Let me have the floor, please. This is a good way to do it. It keeps the overall look and feel of the sneaker without taking away from it. I just think you want to get another wear out of that shirt with those sneakers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know how many things I could rock with this? Regardless if it's fly knit or prime knit, I just, there's just this weird, uh, maybe it's a weird feeling in my head that if you wear like a, a fly knit shoe with a really like stiff and sturdy sole that like your foot, it's gonna feel like sloppy. Mm. Or, Where like, does that have to do with my swag? It has nothing to do with your swag. Oh, okay. It has to do with wearing the shoe. Also releasing this week, um, Packer Shoes uh, for their 110th anniversary did a four pack of A6 Gel Light 3s, also with yep. J. Crew. It's a flip off of they did a collaboration, what, two years ago? Where they did the, right. the Dirty Buck joint. The Dirty kind Buck. Kind of a, a tribute to their long heritage, you know. I think that's a, that's a kind of a big look for Packer, though, to do a collaboration that's going to be in J. Crew stores. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Releasing first at the J. Crew liquor store in New York City. Before we get out of here. Wait, wait, hold up. This is a good sneaker. I just want to say that. This is a good sneaker. Because I think I shitted on a Packer sneaker on this show. I think okay. so. Recently. Well, Brendan designed that one. So that, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's had, right. It was I a Reebok jump off. That's yeah, what it was at. This sneaker is good. I had nothing to do <laughs> with that shoe. Um, we do want to dip into the mailbag before we go. Brendan Connolly, B-Dog Connolly on Twitter is asking, will the latest NCAA scandal have any impact on Adidas sales? Um, right away, the, the, the stock did dip like between three or four percent uh, after the news broke. So I think, I think in the short term, yes. In the, in the long term, I, I don't really think I, so. I don't see how this really, like we're talking about this isn't really an Adidas I don't issue. I don't see how this affects a kid who's like going into a store and it's like, hey, a pair of NMDs. They're like, yeah. no, wait, I heard a news story. In, <laughs> unless, it's not, it's not, no, it's not. Unless good. it is. It is so widespread but, that, I still don't that think it matters. But let's be honest, though, too. It's like, it how much influence do you know NCAA basketball teams have in 2017 yeah. over what sneakers kids buy? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not the Fab Five era anymore or Arizona Wildcats era anymore. I completely agree with Wealthy. Like this, even me personally, I'm a hoops head and a sneaker head. I don't give a damn. Although Jake Spin Music at Jake Spin on Twitter is demanding Welty in Spongebob Dub What's Zero. The, what is the status of that? That is still developing. Um, we will we will deliver Spongebob footwear to Welty in some form. I don't know if we can track down the Dub Zeros. If you have a pair, if you want to sell us, we'll pay top dollar for them. Um, we have Block, that's dblock203 on Twitter, asking what does Jordan Brand have to do in order to take pressure off retros? I, I, I guess he means like, what can they sell other than retro sneakers is yeah. the question here, right? I, yeah. 
number one, they would need performance basketball to come back. As, yeah, okay, as, but they as, can't do that themselves. No, but that if that happened, you know, then maybe that would help them a little bit. And they they need to create product in a weird way that the public trust that's not a basketball sneaker. My answer to that is, again, more stuff like this. It's a retro. It looks like a retro, but it's not an exact retro. So to me, this is better than what they're doing with the 30 line. So the 31 is inspired by the 1, the 32 is inspired by the but, 2, but this is better to me. But the, the difference, too, with Jordan brand compared to like other companies like Adidas or even Nike, where it's like, People like have such like a purist vision of these sneakers a lot of the times. Of oh, Jays? Um, yeah. Okay. Where it's like you can't really like mess around with them too much without pissing people off. Whereas, okay. uh, you know, Adidas will have a classics business, right? And you can do basically whatever you want to the superstar and sell it to the public. And there's not, there may be in a small corner, there's going to be a, maybe a little backlash. Mm -hmm. where people are just going to be like, Superstar. As long as you don't spell the name it, wrong on the box. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a blank canvas. I don't think Jordan Brand has the luxury of treating their sneakers. Well, the thing about it, too, is you got to understand is that but even they certainly the, have been liberal with that stuff. They have, yeah. but there's also been, like, you know, that's when things yeah, have been the thing, on the thing about it is you, you mentioned Adidas and Originals business. The thing about it is although Jordan Brand is a multi-billion dollar business that we all love, it just does not have Most the catalog. Yeah, Most except for wealthy. Love. The, it just does not have the catalog that Adidas or Nike has. No. It hasn't been around nearly as long as either of those but brands. it's also it's also like kind of like a one trick pony to it to a certain extent wow you got all the zingers today okay i mean no i that's mean I'm, I'm not saying that as far as that's like, fair right now no 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 i mean what they offer i don't they, believe that at all no but what they offer to the to the audience where it's like yes. nike can make basketball sneakers nike can make air maxes nike can do whatever they want adidas can do whatever they want jordan brand is stuck in this weird sort of like i shell. think that's exactly how it wants to do it is to, is to expand think, in other categories i, I think jordan trust yeah elsewhere. i think jordan waited too long to expand outside of basketball Basketball, and now it's hurting them. All right, last question in the mailbag, and perhaps the most pressing one. Tom oh, Beecroft, one. Beecroft Beaky 1992 on Twitter wants to know why Who's did Rich Mays mailbag? Lopez buy those Gucci Air Max 97s? And he put a thinking face Is that this emoji one? on there, and I think we were all thinking in a similar way because he did. He did uh, say you on the show wrong. that he wasn't a fan of them. You guys are wrong. You guys are wrong. You guys are wrong. You guys are wrong. You did not. It's not that you just shit on me for it. It was like I was like, oh. I was like, there's a little, there's a little bit deeper story to it, and you're like, oh, now you're being a convert. I did say that. When we were talking about these, we only knew about the black ones, and the black ones suck. But the white ones to me are fire. Come on, they're fire. You don't, you don't think so? All right. I can't support you on that. Um, I am happy that the people are keeping track of, of your <laughs> My every purchases. sneaker purchase <laughs> and, and and keeping Rich honest because it is a hard job. And I'm hey, glad, listen, we, I've never I'm glad lied. we have support. I've never lied a day in my life, except for that time that I told you I wasn't going to cop a pair of sneakers. I definitely lied then. Do not ever pay attention to me if I'm telling you that I'm not copying a pair of sneakers. It's I'm, almost always going to I'm dead happen. ass lying. Okay, okay. Um, that's all we have for this show today. Yes. Again, please do subscribe, YouTube. Even if you don't and you want to use your platform to talk about your own show by quote tweeting it when we promote <laughs> this show, you can do that too. Yes, you can do that too. Before we get on it here on a serious note, rest in peace, Gary Warnett. Yeah, definitely. We'll see you next time. What up, everyone? I'm Rich Mays Lopez. And I'm Brendan Dunn from Soul Collector, asking you to please subscribe to our YouTube page. Why would anyone want to subscribe to Soul Collector's YouTube page? Listen, listen, man. We have hot takes. Okay. We have sneaker release day info. Okay. We have release roundup. Okay. I like to think we have it all. We do have it we, all. We got to get this page popping. Do we have any info on Big Baller Brand? Always. Sold. Subscribe to Soul Collector on YouTube.